Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Alyssa and today we're going to be discussing preventing and managing moisture associated skin damage. But first, if you could hit that subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated as it truly does help my channel grow. So what is moisture associated skin damage? So it's when moisture stays on the skin for too long and it puts the skin at risk for breakdown in the form of burning, rashes, open sores. So sources of moisture can include urine, sweat, saliva, mucus, fluid from wounds, and moisture on the feet. So the result of skin being in contact with too much moisture for too long, generally, um, regardless of the type, gives the same type of reaction. So red, shiny, tight, swollen skin that may or may not be broken open. So normally the longer it stays, the more irritation and then the skin will break open. Um, most people will often complain of burning or pain in the affected area. So you hopefully catch it before the skin breaks open. So how can we prevent moisture associated skin damage? Because prevention is always number one. We can prevent so much pain and misery by using preventative measures, okay? So the method used is, it really depends on the type of moisture uh, associated skin damage that we're trying to prevent. So if it's incontinence associated skin damage, we are going to immediately after an incontinence episode, remove those soiled clothing, pads and products. We're going to get rid of anything that is soiled. Okay, we're gonna clean the skin right away with warm soapy water or a skin cleansing solution and then just pat the skin dry. We wanna make sure that that skin's nice and dry and then we're going to apply um, a moisture, a skin barrier to protect that skin. Um, if we're using a zinc-based product, we're not going to scrub that away because it's not necessary that that's all removed each dressing change, okay? But we're going to apply it more frequently if we're having loose stools or more incontinence, okay? Um, but there, there's lots of different absorbent products that wick um, any leakage away from the skin it the products are great nowadays um but it it completely depends if we're still having issues sometimes we can suggest a bedpan a commode um and it really in some cases um especially towards end of life we can uh, put in a catheter, um, but once again, we need to talk to the healthcare provider um, and they can make their suggestions and orders. Um, there is also fecal containment devices that we can be used. Um, and we just want to make sure that we are making um, regular visits to the toilet to prevent incontinence events. So next we have our sweat, saliva, and mucus. Um, so this can take several steps to prevent skin irritation, especially where skin on skin contact is normal. So say the armpits, under the neck, the breast, the groin, okay? So we want to be wearing loose fitted, lightweight clothing of natural fibers or athletic clothing that whisks away that moisture from the skin, okay? We want to wear supportive garments, um, such as a brassiere, and that reduces the skin on skin contact. Um, and at least once a day, we want to wash and dry these moist areas, such as, as the skin folds. Um, and especially under the breast, you want, you want to wash and dry them very, very well, okay? Um, very, very well. And we do want to avoid using talc powders, corn starch base powders, or barrier creams in these areas um, because it can just add moisture. Um, you also want to avoid tucking in bed sheets, clothes, towels. Um, sometimes clients just put whatever they can to wick away moisture, but there is actual um, moisture wicking materials that your healthcare professionals um, can help you source. Sometimes they're they're kind of hard to get, um, but it, just talk to them and they should be able to help you, okay? 
Next, we have moisture-associated skin damage that's caused by wound drainage. Okay, so this is peri-wound um, maceration. Um, so we want to work with our healthcare professionals to make sure that the cause of the moisture is being addressed. We, we have to get that addressed because it can um, increase drainage can be caused by infection, injury, or increased trauma. Um, so moisture can usually be addressed with a more appropriate dressing um, or an antibiotic. So either we need, because it's an infection, so it's increased drainage, or we just need to use a more absorbent dressing on there. Um, there is also different products that we can use. So skin barriers, films, hydrocolloid dressings um, to put it around the the borders of the wound um, and that can protect the good tissue. So next we have peristomal. Um, so this is if somebody has a stoma, so um, ostomy where their fecal matter are going into a bag. Sometimes we do get moisture uh, problems around that bag. So we want to make sure that we're using the right appliance. If we need to use a different appliance, um, some actually push out the ostomy um, a little bit further, um, or we can use a belt. Sometimes that helps. So we really just need to um, be working with our wound care specialists to figure out the best products that we should be using um, for our ostomy. Um, and then there is all the different skin barriers and absorbent dressings that we can use under that uh, area. Um, and then next we have um, people who have really sweaty feet. Sometimes um, it can cause, it can cause uh, irritation on their feet. Um, so we want to make sure that we're using breathable socks and shoes. Um, if you normally do activities that require walking in wet conditions, make sure you wear waterproof footwear. Um, and then you want to remove those immediately after. Um, say, for example, if you went uh, fishing and you were wearing waders, um, you want to remove those, clean your feet, dry your feet very well, and you want to be making sure that you're looking at your feet daily to make sure that there's no damage. So in general, regardless of the source of moisture, if you or someone you are caring for is at risk for moisture-associated skin damage, Daily skin cleansing inspection are key to prevention of breakdown. So we want to be looking for signs of moisture daily. Gently cleanse the areas at risk with um, lukewarm water and just a mild soap. And we want to make sure that we are drying these areas very, very well. Use lots and lots of towels. We're patting them dry. Um, so don't like rub the area because that can cause damage too. So we just want to use a soft towel and just pat these areas dry, making sure that they're very, very dry. Um, and then especially between the toes, um, that's another spot that a lot of people tend to forget about. Um, so we want to make sure that we're drying those areas very well also. So how do I treat moisture associated skin damage? So once the damage is done, the first thing we need to do is eliminate the cause of the problem. So um, really just going back to our prevention method and eliminating that cause um, so the irritant isn't there, so it has a chance to heal. So if it's just a mild irritation, um, keep the area clean and dry, and within a day or two, you should see some improvement. Most mild skin damage caused by moisture um, can be treated this way. However, um, there are times that you need to call a healthcare professional for help. Um, so if any of the following happens, you need to get a hold of a professional. So if the steps above fail and um, it's not getting any better, um, if the skin is very itchy and scratching is making it worse, um, if you can't control the cause of the moisture, 
Um, or if you have a wound that has increased moisture, pain, odor, and redness, you want to get a hold of a professional because it could possibly be infected. Um, so the healthcare professional will assess the skin and provide recommendations, okay? Um, and then just a caution, so organisms such as yeast, fungus, and bacteria are drawn to dark, warm, moist places and are often common where moisture-associated skin damage is present, okay? So these infections usually need to, need to be treated with either a topical or an oral antibiotic, um, just depending on how bad it is, but your healthcare professional will discuss that with you. Um, so just watch the area um, for any signs of infection. So that's all I have for this video. Um, if you haven't done so already, if you could please hit that subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciated. And if you do have any comments, concerns, please write a comment below. Um, and if you are having further concerns um, and you would like to book an appointment with me, you can book one at thewoundconsultant.com and you can have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me and we can discuss your wounds and anything that's going on, okay? Um, so I'll catch you guys in my next video. See ya.